Hey everyone, I'm Ben Gramico from InterNACHI. Uh, that's the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And uh, this is an InterNACHI webinar. We do free, live, online, interactive webinars. Uh, sometimes I'll do a presentation, but sometimes we'll have a special guest. And today we do have a special guest, uh, Shane Boyd. And uh, he's from South Carolina, near Myrtle Beach. And South Carolina is opening up and the beach is open and businesses are opening up and um, they didn't have a, too much of a terrible time with um, the coronavirus, but um, uh, home inspectors are doing well. But for home inspectors who are not, um, I like to talk to other home inspectors and see what they're doing. And uh, Shane is doing well. He's been a home inspector for many years down in South Carolina. And uh, I want to thank you, Shane, for, um, for taking your time to be with us today. I really appreciate it. What, what are we going to talk about today? Well, in a nutshell, we're going to talk about how to keep your home inspection schedule full without having to deal with realtors all the time. Yeah, uh, cool. That nutshell is what we're going to talk about today. Well, I, uh, as a home inspector for uh, about a dozen years in Pennsylvania, what I did was um, I developed a network of real estate agents and had, had like good relationships with agents. So what is your approach? What is your advice for us today? Okay, well, I'm gonna have, I got three bullet points for today. Some webinars have a PowerPoint. I don't have that, I have three bullet points. If you wanna write these headlines down for yourself, here's the three things we're gonna cover uh, based on today's webinar. Yep. One, okay. talk about, let you know, what kind of business you're really in. Hmm. All right? that in the inspection schools I know I wasn't so one what kind of business are you really in and two how to cut the fat from your marketing budget and that's mean so you're not wasting your marketing dollars and then three how to get and keep your home inspection schedule full without ever having to attend a networking meeting or do a sales presentation at realtor offices again ever so that's the three points more to discover cool. um, so I'm going to start right at Number one, he asked, how do I keep my, how do I build a relationship with my realtors and with my referral sources? Well, it really, it starts with this first step here. Um, again, this isn't something that's taught in the schools and I've been at this since 2004. Um, so I got licensed in 2004, I've been doing inspections ever since. Um, but just kind of FYI, I am a single man firm. What you're looking at right now on my screen, my home office. This is my iPhone, my work computer is right here in front of me. This is just my home office. It's just me. Um, so I don't have a bunch of inspectors underneath me, it's just me. Um, last week, I easily did 14 home inspections. I have 10 inspections on the book for this week and I'm booking next week already. That's pretty good for a resort area where I am. And again, it's, it's all me. And I don't go to realtor offices ever and I haven't since 2008. I don't know if you guys remember 2008, but we had a, a crisis back then with the real estate crisis and a financial deal. And I lived through that and did well. And I'm still doing well. So well, this is an awesome time to be an inspector. Um, it, it's just coming in left, right, and center. I'm loving it. Um, but the first thing you have to be aware of when you're a home inspector is what kind of business are you really in? See, I want you to make this one mindset shift. It'll change how you do your business entirely. Yes, you're a home inspector, but that's not really what you are. All right, you are a marketer of home inspection services. That's what you are. That's kind of a profound mindset shift. Uh, so you are a marketer of home inspection services. That's the first shift that I made in 2007, 2008. Uh, once I realized I was marketing my home inspection services, it changed my entire game plan of how I market to realtors in general. Um, so here's what I did. I mean, right out the gate, once I learned this, and this was, I didn't learn it for almost four years into, uh, into my inspection career. All right, so how did I find this out? Well, I hired a coach. <laughs> That's how I did it. I hired a marketing coach. Um, still have one to this day because I am a marketer of my services. Now, how does that equate to realtors? I don't know who you're marketing to all the time in my area. 
I live in a resort area. Most people I serve, I don't get a chance to meet them. They're out of state. So I live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's a resort area. People move from out of state. They work with their realtors. They go back home. I talk to the realtor over the phone. I talk to the client over the phone. It's all on email and I send the report. Usually I do the inspection and nobody's there. So the whole marketing right to the public for me, it didn't make sense because not many people move across town in my area. So I had to rely on realtors. So I went and did the, all the normal things that everybody else does, which is what do you do? You go to every office, you drop off cards. You go to every office, you drop off brochures. You try everything you can do to do uh, office presentations to get them to let you come in and buy them breakfast. All right. And then even after you do that, here's my issue with doing the presentations. You are doing a marketing or a sales presentation to a bunch of people who are already predisposed to not like you anyway. It's really a crazy way of marketing your business. You're technically marketing to people who don't really like you initially out the gate anyhow. And why do they dislike you not as a person, but as a home inspector? Because when you do a really good job, I mean, you tick off three people in the process. I mean, you as the inspector, you go and do an awesome job on your inspection and you had the buyer's agents ticked off at you. You have the listing agents ticked off at you and you have the uh, owner of the house ticked off at you. Of course, the person you serve loves you. It's great. Um, so you have to shift how you market to realtors. Um, and I'm going to lead up to this portion right here is how to cut the fat for your marketing dollars, step two. You're spending money on brochures. You're spending money on cards. You're spending money maybe on pay-per-click ads. Uh, you're spending money on all kinds of social media platforms. You're spending money on association dues just to be a part of the realtor networks. You might be spending money on your networking meetings to go there and eat breakfast with people that don't like you anyhow. Um, and then you're spending money on buying breakfast to people that don't want to be around you. That all sounds crazy to me. Couple that with the fact that I was pretty much reclusive anyway. And then I, I like this quote that I heard from, uh, it was John Wanamaker. He said, half of my marketing budget is wasted. I just wish which part of it was wasted. That happens. So if you're not tracking where everything comes from, you have no idea where you get in business. You're not going to track your social media as well as you think you can. You're not going to track all those brochures. You're not going to track your business cards. You're not always going to be able to track the pay-per-click campaign to what you think you can. And you really can't track when you do an office presentation. So then what are you doing with all your marketing dollars? You're wasting them. You know, that's the next step. One, you're a marketer of home inspection services, and two, track everything. Um, another one that always made me laugh was they would get calls from representatives from whatever office stating that, oh, you know, Jennifer from the C21 office, you know, talked about you, Shane, and they wanted you to advertise in their folder. Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> okay, where am I spending? $400, $1,000 a year to be on their folder? Well, you don't get any return on your investment there. So again, back to thinking like a marketer. I know this is all marketing stuff and not really directed right towards realtors just yet. We have to build on that. You're a marketer of your inspection services. It's a business, yes? That's for sure. That's for sure. I think a lot of home inspectors kind of forget that they are essentially um, a salesman as well. So you can be a, uh, an entrepreneur, but an entrepreneur really means that you are a salesperson. And we were just talking about this just recently in a group, um, in a session with other inspectors that, you know, you have to, um, you have to be, always be a salesperson and uh, it, it may come down to simply just informing your clients that you are performing an inspection and you do other inspections as well, because a lot of people just don't know what you do. So my recommendation is always telling inspectors to, 
you know, make sure your entire neighborhood knows what you do. Um, you should be marketing yourself. Marketing is maybe a bad word for some home inspectors because they don't have, you know, they don't think they have the skill set to talk. But actually, you, you probably do. Just strike up a conversation and make sure you, all of your neighbors know that you're the inspector or you're the roof inspector or you've got the infrared camera or something like that. You're always, always be marketing. Um, and tell, if you have a client, tell your client the other things that you do. And I think that's, a, that's one of the things that we're weak on as home inspectors. We don't think, you're absolutely right. We're, we need to be better at marketing. And sometimes it's just being a bit talkative about what you actually do. Uh, yes, you're in this profession. You obviously enjoyed it at some facet. Don't be afraid to tell everybody about it. I mean, market your business because if you're not marketing your business, nobody's going to do it for you. Um, think about the biggest companies out there. Uh, think about, I'm using their phone, Apple. Think about Apple. Okay, no, technically you didn't really see Steve Jobs in the marketing department, but they had a marketing department and they had, they created demand. If you don't believe that, then just look at when every time a new phone comes out, people wait in line for hours to get this crazy phone. They have definitely created a demand. I know with the realtors that I work with, they don't refer anybody else. It's not even an option. They may have ways around it, and they'll say they had to refer three people, and that's fine. They refer, you know, A to Z company and you know X, Y, and Z company, but. Shane from Buckeye, he's has always done a great job. Well, who are they going to use? You know, the client's going to end up calling me. And I've built relationships with, with real estate agents, and I did it, crazy as it sounds, without looking them in the eye face-to-face -face until if they come by to the inspection. I never went to the office to solicit business. And I'm going to tell you something and how I did it really in step three here. Yeah. Archaic at first it's gonna sound really quite ridiculous and incredibly simple when you first hear it. But I wanna caution you with that. Again, you're a marketer of your services. And I'm gonna tell you what the best form of marketing aside from word of mouth is. It's the same marketing that's been out there for centuries now, okay? It's been out there and really documented well over a century um, of a proven track record. And here is how I built my inspection company from doing on average about $45,000 a year to over $100,000 a year as a one man show. And that's through one marketing medium alone. And that was direct mail. Simple as that, direct mail. Now, I know some people are just like, yeah, insert eye roll, direct mail, whatever. Here's what I hear a lot when I give speeches and do uh, other seminars and so on about direct mail. Here is this, here is the very first rebuttal that I get from that. I tried direct mail and it didn't work. That's what I hear. I'm not gonna argue that your direct mail didn't work. I can tell you very simply why the package or the letter or whatever it was you sent out, whatever it was, I can tell you why it didn't work. There wasn't a good message and it was probably boring. Here's what a typical home inspector sends out because they don't know, they're not taught this. <clears throat> they're sent out a letter and they'll have their fancy pants logo on the letterhead and then they'll have it usually they don't handwrite on the letter they'll just do a, a sticker of their own address because they can print that out from the printer and just have their own address there or have the person's address in there and then they put the stamp on there and inside of this uh, uh envelope here's the really wicked awesome thing that inspectors a lot of times will put in there a brochure so now you're sending a brochure to somebody that doesn't really want to hear from you anyhow. What's the likelihood of that person ever calling you? Seriously, if you open up the mail and say, like, oh, brochure, yeah, great, trash. And that's where it goes. Uh, it's you know, in the instructor file. That's where it goes every time. That's what I do. <laughs> if I get, a, if I get a, an envelope with a sticker on it, and a big logo. I know it's a, from a business. If it's a flyer, uh, I probably just throw it away almost immediately because I'm in no need for anything right now. That's what's in my head. Correct. There is, it, it, it just hit, hit you at the right time. Whatever it was, you can tell it was an adversement from that comfort. You didn't need it. It was trash. Now, you want to have the right message to the right market 
via the right media. And it's all, all you always talk kinds of media. Facebook, it's media. Don't think that it's actually some kind of crazy social platform people connect. No, once they went to IPO, it is, it's media. It is just about the marketing dollars. Uh, Instagram, it's a media. That's all it is. That's a marketing medium. Pay-per-click ads, another marketing medium. I mean, that's all they are. It just so happens that direct mail has outpolled every bit of digital marketing combined by a tune of 600 to 1500%. You get a better ROI from direct mail than you do all other digital platforms combined. Hmm. It, it's, you look it up and here's, here's some stats that I printed out for and I include this in my stuff as well. Um, for example, just think about yourself as well when I let you know this. Overall, consumers trust direct mail over digital. Now let that sink in for a second. Would you rather have somebody hit you up through a text message or an Instagram post or Facebook as opposed to actually sending you a letter? What kind of birthday wish would you rather have? A text, <laughs> hey, inbox from your friend or a buddy of yours or a spouse or whomever, a family member, send you an actual card. Well, of course, you're going to choose a card every time. <clears throat> I mean, we get a, a positive neural association from direct mail, where I just don't get that from all digital platforms. Now, think of who your target is. Realtors, yes. I don't really deal with realtors. I don't go chasing them down and talking to them and calling them and going to the offices and doing all that nonsense. I don't do that. I have done it since 2008, 100% with direct mail. Then that begs the question, okay, how did you do it from direct mail alone? Remember I mentioned a minute ago about how we're marketing to people who are already predisposed to not like us? Hmm. We are. I mean, yes, after you get to working with certain realtors, you build friendships, and that happens, man. But by and large, the real estate community doesn't really like home inspectors, man. I mean, look at us, and they call us like vendor vermin. I mean, we're not like their best friends. I mean, they're, we're, we're just not. And you have to understand that. But we're marketers. And we have families to feed. I married and have two kids. So, yes, I have a house. I, have, I got bills to pay. I have a family to support and feed. So I have to go out there and deal with that animal. How can I get people who already don't really like me that much to start sending me business? Hmm. See how I'm thinking? I'm thinking like a marketer, yep. I'm not like a home inspector. Okay, a home inspector would think, well, I'm the best there is in town. I'm gonna show up my white horse, I'm gonna save this person. No, you're a business owner, man. Think like a business owner. Here's what I did with my marketing, very, very simple. I humanized myself in my marketing. So when they got mail from me, it was no longer, oh, he's just a home inspector. One, when they got the mail, they didn't know it came from a home inspector. It didn't look like your traditional home inspector marketing letters, not at all. When they read it, they didn't know they were actually reading it from a home inspector until they got like halfway through my letters. So Shane, Shane, what, what you're referring to they. Um, Michael on YouTube is asking, who are you sending the direct mail to? Are you, are you saying they as real estate agents? Is this the direct mail going to real estate agents? Correct. You're, yep. you're, it's, thanks for asking. Yep. Your market is realtors. You're going right to the realtors because that's where you're getting most of your business from anyway. My angle is I don't have to go talk to them give presentations, network with them. I don't do any of that. I haven't stopped by a realtor office other than picking up a key and since 2008, 2009. I just don't do it. So yes, your realtors are the people you're, you're mailing to. Which also that's, okay, do I mail to their house or do I mail to the office? Mail to the office. Mail to their office, unless their house happens to be their office and that's the case, mail to the office. There are a handful of realtors that I know personally uh, because I've done their personal house inspections um, and I've done their family's inspections. They just got to know me and like me and trust me, so I'm the arts house. 
but no, you mail it to the office. Um, there is, if you can look up any kind of marketing for yourselves, this is a good tidbit for anybody listening today. If you honest to goodness want to grow your home inspection company, yes, shift your thinking, you're a marketer of home inspection services, invest in some copywriting. That might be a new term because I certainly didn't hear about that in, in any kind of inspection course, that's for certain. Copywriting is salesmanship and print. Think of it like this. This is how I think of my mail when I send it out. <clears throat> if I'm targeting this specific office because they have all the high-end listings of the houses over a million, two million dollar marks, so they're a lot bigger, obviously I charge more for them. If I'm, if I'm targeting that office, what would I hire a salesperson to say in the first 15 seconds once they got in front of them and started talking to them to refer me? That's how you have to look at this. If you're hiring a salesperson to go to that office and talk about you and have everybody in the office refer you, what are you going to have them say? Hmm. Well, I humanized myself. I used everything I had. I used my pets. I used my kids. I used my wife. Of course, I used my own stuff as well. I use endorsement letters from other realtors in that office who use me and like me and trust me, and I'll use it in their voice, but here's how I use it. I'll market to the realtors in the office, and I'll be in the voice of my kids. That's how I'm marketing to them. This isn't like a normal, boring looking, typed out message. This is a message coming from a seven-year-old kid with crayons on his paper. <laughs> The kind of stuff I'm delivering. It doesn't look slick. It doesn't look fancy, but I get a direct response. It's definitely targeted. I get an excellent return on my investment. I can track it down to the letter. Well, I, how do you do that? In step two, you were talking about tracking your Google ads and spending money on coffee and breakfast and not really knowing, like investing your time and doing a presentation, not really knowing your return on your investment, especially your time. How are you doing like tracking for direct mail to real estate agents? I like a good question. Two things. One, every piece I send out has an offer. There will be an offer. That's like one of the deadline rules you got to have in your mail. There will be an offer. And the offer could be $27 off the price of the inspection. The offer could be a value added. I always did a discount with the inspection. Um, it would be $27 off, a weird number. I would have $34 off. I would have $17 off. I would have a definite dollar off. Then there will be a deadline. You're not running this offer for the whole year. If I'm running an offer, I never ran it for more than 30 days, ever. Therefore, I knew that when some realtor or the client would call me up, and say, hey, uh, Sally from Keller Williams, you know, said to give me a call about doing a home inspection. Oh, and by the way, she said that some kind of coupon you have for like $34 off. Tracked it. I know exactly what's going on. And once I get that, I just put a little nod to my clipboard, you know, because I have my different campaigns that I have out throughout the month. So there will be an offer. There will be a deadline. That way you know for certain that that is exactly where your business came from is that letter. And then you leave uh, your phone number to call me uh, to schedule your next inspection or an email or a schedule online at my website or what? What's the call? What, what should they do? Always. It's a phone number for me. Um, my salvation there at the end will basically be, you know, for example, when it's my kids that I would have in their voice calling or, or writing a letter. I say, and you know, call my daddy Shane at Buckeye Home Inspections at my phone number is there. But you know, call before you know June nineteenth. This offer won't last forever. You know, and P.S. State my offer again. So no, my offer is always a dollar off kind of deal, a deadline, and to call me. Um, they can go to the website if they want to and send me an email. You know, that's they can Google my you know, company Buckeye Home Inspections in Myrtle Beach, and of course you find me. Uh, no, so I was able to phone number. Uh, we get a question from YouTube. Jacob says, can we hear an example of one of those humanized letters? You're actually saying, I didn't, I didn't realize, you're actually saying uh, you write as if your, your child was writing a real estate agent a letter? Yes. 
Yes. Exactly. Is there some kind of ethical thing going on with that? <laughs> Look at what you're doing right now, Ben. You're supposed to be doing that? <laughs> you're, like, you're, you're thinking this is fun, right? Yeah. Hit them right in the eyes. And they're like, oh, this is, this is, what? Are you kidding me? Is this really what I'm reading? Yes, this is really what you're reading. Um, let's see if I can get one off top of my head just verbatim here. I won't get exactly. Okay. <clears throat> there is one. Typically, I don't know about where you are from, but here, my inspection business would normally slow down sometime at the end of August, the beginning of September. September, many months, I could go on vacation. If you think about that, school is in session, people already moved, or, so September was slow for me. Um, and one letter I sent out was my daughter, it was her first, it was, she was a freshman, it was her first year in uh, high school. So I sent the letter out in my daughter's voice at that time, she was right at 13 years old, I guess. Um, the letter read something to the effect of, um, you know, dear friend, this is Aspen Boyd, the marketing director from Buckeye Home Inspections. I'm 13 years old and I'm going to high school for the first time ever this coming up year. Now, if you're a realtor, think about that. Like, why, what am I, what is this? You're intrigued, right? They're reading this and this is not BS. I use this stuff and it works like clockwork every time. Then go on, the letter goes on to read. You see, during this time of year, my daddy is typically not as busy doing home inspections. And when he's not busy doing home inspections, he is cranky and hard to be around. I mean, geez, he'll like pace around the floor looking for like, you know, trying to find work and he's angry and grouchy. And honestly, I just can't deal with it because now I'm going to high school. I got to deal with a high school stress and with my daddy stress. Would you please get my daddy out of the house? Here's my, here's my offer. And then it goes on with the offer and people are like, this won't work. This sounds stupid. This won't work. It works. It works. <laughs> every single time use what you have now that offer ended up basically stating that through the month of september we're offering xyz off the inspection and he continued in my daughter's voice and he said please I'll, I'll let you know how things go at the end of the month my first um month in high school but please get my dad out of here here's the phone number to call manny on uh, youtube asks um how often do you send these letters I send these letters out, it's, it depends on the campaign. For example, if you're gonna ask for this one particular campaign, here's what I'm gonna tell you. Follow the model of the bill collector. I know you don't wanna hear that, and maybe you've heard some people had bill collectors call them. How does that happen? Oh, what, what's their model? They'll call you, hey, you owe us money, pay us money. That's kind of their sales pitch. You don't hear, you don't respond back to them. Two weeks later, you get a second notice. And it says that, second notice, right there on the top of the envelope, second notice. That's if they haven't responded, they get a second notice. Hey, I sent you this XYZ letter. You can include the same letter. I haven't heard back from you. Two weeks after that, third and final notice. That's how I run a campaign. If I am doing a drip campaign, which means I'm just touching base with all of my contacts, I do that once a month. Once a month, I'll have a basic campaign that goes out just touching base with all of my contacts. That is, that could be anything from a thank you to a, a funny riddle I might put in there, just anything to continue to keep in contact with them and stay in front of them. Again, direct mail. This isn't, I'm not, handwriting everything i use systems like send out cards highly recommend that's a writer downer send out cards look into it guarantee you find somebody in town that you can connect with who hook up and send out cards um that is i write the campaign i put my contacts in i pay the postage and a card price i press send it's gone yeah so do you think um envelopes uh handwritten envelopes with the uh with the mailing address handwritten on the envelope, which takes some time and a stamp, or yeah. um, a service like you just mentioned, where you could order it and it's, um, it's not coming from your hand, but uh, it's maybe a postcard. What do you think are, are, is more successful? I've used all of the above. If you're, and here's, 
good question. Now, we have to look at who we're targeting. What are you doing with this campaign? I don't mean to get too much into marketing, really, as far as just get down to brass tax marketing. But again, your business owners and your marketers of home inspection companies. If you're looking at this as a campaign of, I want to get um, all the top producers in my area, the first contact with them, I'm writing out a letter. I'm going to handwrite on the envelope. Handwrite a return address, not my company name. Just a return address. That's important. It's called sneak up approach. You can Google that. That's from Gary Halbert, one of the best copywriters ever. It's called a sneak up approach. If you get a handwritten letter with it has your name on the front of it and it's handwritten, it has their return address handwritten and a stamp, you open it. It no longer gets run away. So if you're contacting somebody first, handwritten letter. What's that, what's that called again? Sneak up? Sneak up. It's a sneak up approach. Sneaker, but sneak up? Sneak up. Oh, okay. I can sneak up on you. Okay, sneak up. Because think about again who your um, clients are, your, your prospects, your realtors, the people you're mailing to. They're getting letters from their past clients or hopefully future clients. If they see something in their inbox that's all handwritten, they open it. And if you can get them with a headline, which is the, the opening of the uh, letter itself, it won't just be dear friend, you have a headline. You have, have you ever, have you ever uh did uh, handwritten letters um, after the inspection. So whenever I did an inspection, I actually hand wrote a thank you uh, card um, inside, uh, I, a little message and my signature, no business card. Um, I made sure my name and my business name was written out well. I have terrible handwriting, but you had to slow down and take a deep breath and write it clearly so they can hear, right. they can see uh, who's it from. Uh, no, no flyer, like you said, because you're going to throw it away. No business card either. And then I uh, hand wrote the address um, on the front of the envelope and I had a stamp and all this was in my truck. And I did it immediately after the inspection. And I threw it in the mail. A couple of days later, the real estate agent that I sent that thank you letter to um, receives it. And so it's reinforced. Do you ever think of that and getting a return on your investment doing that? I love that. That's every thank you. Every time I do a home inspection, I don't finish the inspection without the thank you card already being in the mail. I haven't done the, what, as far as the right now on their site before, I have done it on the weekend prior to, I have done it in the evenings, and I put it into a system called send out cards and have it go out just like clockwork. Yep. Thank you have to go out. You have to let them know that you appreciate their referrals. Yep. Again, I'm doing all of this without ever really seeing them. I'm still working with realtors I've worked with for years, and I haven't met face-to-face. -face. Where do you get the initial mailing address of the real estate agents for your direct mail? Goes back to a little bit of elbow grease for yourself, but that is pretty much who do you want to target in your area. Where I live, there's probably 4,000 realtors in my area. So I just, you just drive and you notice the same method you would use to go stop by and drop off cards and brochures. You have their address. You can go to the website and look up all who is at that address. And I kind of go through and I pick out the ones who typically have the most listings. Um, usually if they have the most listings, they're the busiest ones in the office. So I work with them. I did that. My wife did that at the beginning. And at that, after a couple of years of doing that, I have such a, such a network of people that refer me because they talk in the office that I don't do that anymore. But no, you just look it up on Google, find out the address and mail it to them. Yeah, Larry asks, um, where do you purchase your list of realtors? So you don't necessarily need to purchase a list, you're saying. Purchase a list. Um, I have twice in the past 16 years of doing this. <clears throat> and what happened there was I would send out you know, 400 pieces of mail and 100 pieces to come back, <laughs> okay? I don't buy a list with that. If you're gonna buy a list, buy a list of the one-year warranty inspections. That's a whole new ball of wax. No, the list I made myself. I sat at my computer and I looked up Keller Williams, Myrtle Beach. 
and however many offices popped up, I clicked on it, looked at it, kind of had my, you know, litmus test and who I'm going to target from there. Just write down my name and Excel, all the stuff. And that's how I did it. So it was manual, all manual. Um, let's see. Uh, Steven reminds us that some of the realtors in our area are abandoning their offices due to COVID-19 and going 100% virtual. Any suggestions for targeting them? The same. I would, I would use the same kind of approach that I, was, that I would use in direct mail. I would just try to target them on Facebook alone. You know when you do a Facebook ad, you can only advertise, to, if you want to advertise to only 20 people, you can you put their email address into Facebook and you can advertise only to those people along with whomever else you're trying to target. Yeah, I would just, I would just mix it up a little bit. And I, I haven't had to do that. We didn't really close down so much here, um, but that's what I would do. I couldn't get them any other way. I would do social media, but I would still, you can, this is going back to Facebook marketing a bit, look into yourself. With Facebook marketing, you can put in all the emails of the people that you want to work with or are advertised to, and Facebook will only show that ad to those people. So imagine if those realtors are seeing these, these fun ads I'm talking about, but the 13 year old kid goofing off about their dad being, you know, out of work. It's fun. <laughs> and that's how I would do it. Um, so you mentioned sendoutcards.com. Yes. Uh, that's it looks like a pretty cool website. It looks like you can send out a card from your phone. Uh, you can design a, a card or a message or something like that. Is that your company? Sendoutcards.com. Oh, um, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I thought that was kind of common. I've heard that a lot since 2007. They came out. Send out cards. Look into them. Honest to goodness, fantastic company. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't sell it. They're just good. So use them. Here's what it is. It is a card company on the outside of a card, picture a birthday card. And it has an ink that looks like it's been handwritten. You may have seen some of those things in the mail. You can use the um, jumbo postcards. You can use um, uh, the normal size postcards. You can use the normal cards, a big card. Uh, send out cards and you fill it out and you have your entire database in there and you have your campaign and you press send. That's really, I can send out, I can send out 500 pieces of mail in like five minutes. Hmm. You pay for it just stuff, that's how I do it, send out cards. Um, let's see, Stephen asks, um, can you give some examples of headlines you use on your letters? Okay. That's the first thing that you're talking about, like giving them a punch real fast in your, in your uh, uh, message. You Yes, uh, some I have used in the past. Um, there'll be a headline with a picture beside it. If it's a picture, the picture gets their attention. Um, but I don't have that. I have that in my program that I have. I don't have it show you here now. Um, here's one. It can be, um, I know, I know, nobody likes the home inspector. Therefore, you're kind of already talking in their, and speaking their language. That's one that I've used in the past. Um, I've used other ones. You know, 85% of all home, inspector, home inspectors in our area are complete idiots and they have caused 100% of your problems in the, real estate, in the real estate transactions. That one was probably the best one I used, I'll tell you why. Um, that one, that silly headline alone, I had people call me up laughing. I had people call me up obviously to book the inspections. Even had one, one uh, realtor called back and she was mad about the headlines. I think her uncle was a home inspector. Um, and he, he called and got mad about that. Those great. Uh, that one headline, that letter alone, I know I tracked it down to about $10,000 worth of work. And I can't even track as far as how many years I've worked with these realtors now from that one, that one letter. Um, so as far as headlines, I'm glad somebody asked. Look up some of the top headlines, top 100 headlines of all time. Look at those headlines, and here's what you do as a marketer. You think, how can I use that in my business? That's how I get these headlines a lot. They don't just come out of thin air. I've got a whole template that I've used, you know, how to, you know, X, Y, Z without X, Y, Z, you know. Uh, Steven says you can also um, send gifts like coffee cards through send out cards. So it seems like a, um, Steven knows a little bit more than I do about it. There's also, Natchi has um, 
nachi.gifts, uh, nachi.org slash gifts, G-I-F-T-S, nachi.org slash gifts is a place where um, home inspectors can grab a gift card and send right. their gift card to the real estate agent and they get benefits um, through that, uh, that, that you, little URL through the card. So that's another resource as well. Hey, what are, what are some other tips that you can leave us with, Shane? Okay, excellent. And then here's something else that it has to, it, it, if it goes without saying, it goes without knowing. You have to be extremely good at what you're doing. Now, understand, I believe that you are because you're part of InterNACHI, so I know the training's there. I know you're a good home inspector. Do not look at the real estate agent as one, as in like an adversary, because they're not. They're not at all. I mean, they're the ones who's referring work to you so you can buy your kids braces. All right. They're actually, they're good people to work with. I just don't particularly enjoy being around all of them because most of them don't really enjoy the inspectors. So they're not our necessary. There are people who are giving us money. Um, also, I would absolutely get into reading everything I could about marketing. If I would have started this years before I, you know, started my inspection, I'd be way ahead by now. Read anything from Dan Kennedy. Just write that name down, Dan Kennedy. Look up anything he has to say about marketing, phenomenal. And you will learn everything you need to know about direct mail, direct response. Um, absolutely would definitely recommend anything about that. <clears throat> learn how to do some copywriting. If you learn how to write sales copy, you're never going to be hungry again, I promise you. Again, I still, to this day, I'm still doing what I do. I don't just do speaking and coaching. I have a full inspection a company that I still own and operate. I mean, I'm going to leave this webinar. I'm going to an inspection one hour from now. I mean, I'm still doing um, I'd also recommend, it's a, a shameless plug here for myself. Um, people were asking about headlines. I didn't print it out. I wish I would have. I'm sorry. Um, I would have taken them out. But in my, in my marketing toolkit that I put together, um, and basically all my best offers I've ever used and along with videos and audios teaching you how to do exactly what I do. I mean, you can go to this website here. It's simple enough. Inspect yeah. marketing 2020. Dot. I'll write it down. I'll write it down. I'll put it on the screen. Inspect marketing Ins 2020. Inspector marketing. Inspector marketing. Got it. It's on the screen. Inspector marketing 2020.com. Got it. Yep, so it's not 2020. Yep, inspectormarketing2020.com. And what I have done, um, I'll tell you blatantly, it's basically all my best stuff and teaching you exactly how I do direct mail and target realtors, who to target, how to target them, how often to mail, um, how to use your marketing calendar. I put that onto a website. Um, I have charged $47 for this. However, if you were to use your promo code that I put together just for you guys, Natchi2020, you'll get 30% off at That's the nice. distance. Really so appreciate that. <clears throat> and that's a, a discount code. Can you say it again? It's a discount code. It's, it's Natchi2020. Natchi2020. That's pretty easy to do. It, it, that's, it was for me. That's why I did it. So Natchi2020, and then you'll get a... Uh, 30% off that. And again, this isn't all just about selling the product. I mean, I'm just teaching you what I have done yep. because it's frustrating trying to get referrals when you're beating the streets and doing everything you can. Trust direct mail. It works. Become a student of it. Now, in the kit that I have here, you can take what I've used and basically just type it out for yourself, change the words, change the pictures, and send it out. Um, I have plenty of things in there as well. I use yellow letters that look as though they're handwritten. I've actually paid people to handwrite actual letters. There are services you can handwrite. I sent out things like elves at Christmas. I mean an elf about 18 inches tall. I send that out to some of the top producers at Christmas. I had work from that and I still get them and the entire office. And I teach you how to um, get referrals from the person you're working with in that office to basically talk about you and refer you to everybody else in the office. So it's not that I'm against realtors. It's simply, I don't want to have to go to all of the offices and do that. It's a waste of my time. 
Yep. If you send a salesperson out there, i.e. a sales letter, and then they send back referrals, I basically send out letters and I get checks in the mail. <laughs> and that's exactly what I do. So it, you started your presentation, Shane, uh, talking about a coach that you hired. Are you available as a coach? Do you have coaching services available for inspectors? I, I'm glad you asked, and I will direct you to the best around um, because his, he's a full-time home inspector coach. The coaches I use are for personal development. A uh, full-time home inspector coach. His name is Ken Compton, and I'll let you know the name of the company. It's the Savvy Inspector. Yep. And I, I would some of the stuff you read on the message boards. When it comes to the business side, folks, take you with a grain of salt sometimes. Understand you're a business and you're business-minded now. You're a marketer of your inspection services. And for a whopping like 80 bucks a month, you can have basically everything that I learned from Ken and then some. He's a great person. So I would highly recommend a savvy inspector. Awesome. Well, Shane, I really appreciate the time that you uh, spent with us, um, helping us um, be better marketers and owners and operators of our home inspection businesses and um, giving us some tips on how to market uh, with direct mail marketing. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for the offer. Thank you for having me. I'm glad I was able to give back. And for everybody out there doing inspections, stay safe and happy inspecting. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Shane. Appreciate Thank it. You.